Welcome to the homestead. I'm Heather. Today I wanted to give you a quick little garden tour. It's mid-July and I wanted to show you what we've got growing um, amongst those weeds. Uh, the weeds seem to be taking over, growing faster than I can pull them, unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do next year to kind of pull back the weed uh, pressure in the garden. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that garden tour. And so first off, I want to share with you that um, everything is a work in progress here. Uh, so um, we have some projects going on that's not completed um, and we do have a mess. So we're just going to share it all with you and you're going to see um, the whole bit. All right, guys. So um, as we walk into the garden here on the left, we have... Um, okra and green uh, some kind of onion I think it's a shallot we've never been able to harvest any bulbs off of that um, so I think this year is going to be the last year I'm going to remove that so we'll remove that all right so I don't know what we're going to get um, these are supposed to be shallots I'm going to pull them up and we're going to use them in whatever way that we can all right and make room for other vegetables to go in this spot here okay across from the uh, shallots and the okra there is a beautiful cluster of pine cone ginger this year I'm hoping or shampoo ginger this year I'm hoping to be able to get enough off of this to actually start using um, for a shampoo okay guys over here is some Brussels sprouts will probably just end up taking those up they've been there for quite a while and never really have done anything so i'm gonna have to try to keep going on those over here is a volunteer um tomato that i moved um it's got some tomatoes on it some cherry tomatoes on it so let's go ahead and grab those now this one here again was a volunteer so i'm not quite sure what variety it is um it was a few feet from this spot, and I just moved it um, to this area here, okay? So, all right, there's a few tomatoes we got. Okay, so alongside here on each side are the pineapples that I've got started for the next pineapple experiment. So, um, we've got to get on that, and I'll show you the area here in a bit where we are going to be putting that. The cabbage and the cauliflower rose still okay I was waiting on the cabbage mostly um, but as you see I think it just kind of stalled here is a cauliflower that went to seed all right and we do have it looks like some wild weeds growing up here in our okra so I'm probably gonna have to weed those real quick and um, I'm gonna harvest all of these cabbage heads to get them out of the way for another crop so let me go ahead and do that okay so we're going to harvest as much of this cabbage and put it up as we can um, i've not been the greatest at uh sauerkraut but um dave really loves sauerkraut so i'd like to try to get some of these uh better looking heads into some sauerkraut so that's what I'm hoping for on some of these heads. So we'll see what we get and what we can come out with. Okay, as I was cleaning up this area here for the next crop of the cabbage, I found that we have some onions down in there. I forgot about those. And it looks like Barry has been over here examining them as well. And it looks like this was a group of candy onions. So, we've got some onions and there's some garlic now, I can't remember where I planted the corms or the garlic, so I'll have to check into that. Um, I think they got a little shaded out by the cabbage, so 
those aren't doing so well and as well we have some onions down here now a lot of that was covered up by the cabbage so I'll make a note of that next time to put them a little further away from the plants okay so across from the cabbage area we put in some tomatoes and the this variety here is the speckle romas this one is growing in an odd way so um it looks weird but uh have been pruning this um doing it a little different this year i don't know how that's gonna play out uh, we have some sweet basil down here we did have some other plants down below these tomatoes but they unfortunately did not make it here is another speckled roma and here are some tomatoes as well those are really looking pretty so i'm excited to see what these end up looking like when they're completely ripe so and we have a wild blackberry um here we have this variety of cucumber that we grew this year and unfortunately a lot of them has gotten too big i have eaten some of them i've let them get brown like they say to do but in my opinion they just start getting dry when it gets to that stage so um if i grow these again i'm going to be picking them a little bit differently and we're going to go ahead and harvest and see if we can keep this going for a little longer and here is another one just a few feet away we're going to try to keep it under control this plant here has um, been struggling since we put it in it has this plant has been split, splitting and healing over so i think that that has stunted its growth um, it's done it more than one time I'm afraid it might have been getting too much water okay and next to uh, this one cucumber on the end we do have a um, determinate tomato we're gonna have to looks like we're gonna have to come in and stake this up we do have tomatoes on it so um, let's see if we can see the variety of tomato that it is this one I did not grow give me that this one I did not grow from a seed and it's a better bush hybrid okay so I wanted to try out a determinate tomato. Okay, so we're going to see how this works. I'm not sure that the placement uh, was the smartest thing to do, but we're going to try it anyways and see how the determinants work out. All right. Now over here, again, I had to, um, none of my bell peppers made it. I don't know what was wrong. I didn't have any seeds come up, which was odd. Um, but this is a bell pepper. It's a red bell pepper. And Dave was worried we didn't have any sweet bananas. So um, I did start some from seed. But I wasn't sure how they were going to grow. Because um, I thought I lost the plants. But they actually have survived. So, But anyways, this is a store-bought uh, plant. It's got sweet banana peppers on it. Um, so we're going to be picking those as well. And here we have, now this plant here I did start from seed and Barry loves the peppers. So I'm going to try to harvest a few. Um, I know I'm going to probably uh, mutilate the name, but it's a Bueno Mulata. It's a chili pepper. I want to try to make chili powder out of this pepper. <laughs> if I can keep her from eating them all. And here is an onion I tried to collect the seeds from, so I wasn't able to do that. I'm going to pull that up. Uh, and then we have a marigold and, of course, some more of those chili peppers. Struggling strawberries. And, again, another struggling chili pepper. Um, it looks like it's going to be time to be uh, staking up those peppers and things again, so I'm going to get on that as well. So let's go ahead and harvest what needs to be done on this aisle. How you eat them come on quit I'd like to try one oh berry I mess is hot <coughs> a 
Okay, guys, so <coughs> I went and um, tried this pepper because I want to make a chili powder out of this. Pepper, I'm really not sure. This is the first year I've ever grown it. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's quite spicy. Um, so I'm kind of excited to try. It's got a good flavor, too. It's kind of got a, a little bit of a bell type taste. So it's, um, so this is a good pepper. I'd like to try it in some, um, chili powder. So we're going to try that in chili powder. And, uh, try to harvest some of the lower ones so Barry quits eating them but yeah I had to go grab some <clears throat> water for that pepper So there is the little stinker that freaked me out. <laughs> so you guys get to see me freak out in the garden today. But we're definitely going to let him live. We're not going to stomp him to death. So <laughs> glad I was able to see what it was. Okay, guys. So we're going to go along and pick up what we have collected and put it in a basket. Okay, that's off of this row, this one half a row here. To the next row, uh, these two bushes here are called sugar rush peppers. Um, these are supposed to be fruity, but yet a spicy pepper. I'm not seeing any um, orange ones. They're supposed to be like a peachish color. So um, these are not quite ready yet. And Barry loves peppers. So, um, and I did find a garlic clove and I popped it in there. Um, here are some onions. I lost the tags for everything. And here is a Black Beauty tomato. This thing is absolutely stunning. Uh, Dave has been impatiently waiting for a couple of those tomatoes to ripen. Um, they're getting to a point where they're ripe. And I'm going to be picking them because they're at the level Barry is. And Barry's been pecking a lot of different things. So, and I want to save these. All right, guys. So, we have a couple of cantaloupe here. And they are the, called the Golden Jenny cantaloupe. Okay. Um, and we have some oregano down here. This is a really nice addition to the garden. It smells absolutely lovely. Okay, guys. And across from there, this is where we had the potato bags. And all of the garlic corms were growing in here. The corms have died back. We have some weeds approaching in here. So we're going to um, try to get those taken care of. Again, um, the garlic corms have died back. So they will come back again. And we will be able to harvest those next year. I did put in some sunflowers here. Some beautiful sunflowers next to the garlic. Um... I thought I lost this comfrey. Um, I had it in a container and it really, there was three crowns and I only have one left and it was really struggling. So I popped it over here with the garlic and it has really taken off. So um, I noticed that this morning. And of course, I've really got to get in and get these weeds taken down. So, but there's really nothing there to harvest yet. Okay. So, garlic is there. We're going to go on to the next, um, Rose, we're going to be getting into the weedy section here, so um, here comes the weeds. All right, so here on the left, we have purple jalapenos, and here on the right, they're supposed to be yellow jalapenos. So to start with, I want to let you know that these peppers come out of the bloom purple. They come straight out of the bloom purple, which is weird, but it's kind of cool to see. But these over here, they come out green and they end up being purple. So I'm not sure if that was just a genetic thing, but those are looking really nice. And I do have some onions planted down in amongst these weeds underneath the peppers. 
Um, I really need to get over here and gain control of this. I'm hoping that I can do that this week. Um, the onions are looking good. If I can keep Barry from eating them all. Um, these over here are the yellows. Okay. But they are definitely green. Alright. But these down here are looking a little pale green. They're looking more lime green. So these look like they may be the yellows. Okay, they're more of a lime green color. So I'm excited about these. I know none of these are ready, quite ready yet. But the bushes are becoming loaded. I may, um, this one here looks like it's got a bad spot on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick that one. Maybe, maybe we'll give it a try to see how spicy it is. But yeah, see, it's got some bug damage to it. Okay, guys, so this pepper bed here on, on both sides, um, I've grew, decided to grow the purple and the yellow jalapenos because um, we've had a request for some cowboy candy, and I thought we eat with our eyes, so why not try to make some cowboy candy with the purple and yellow and make it colorful? So I've had requests for cowboy candy. So um, we're going to be getting that made this year. And um, hopefully gain some customers out of that start. So here we have a tomato that had blossom and rot. But part of it is still good. So we're going to try to harvest that. Alright. And these tomatoes are supposed to be black brandy wines. But I'm kind of hesitant about that. Excuse me. Four plants are surviving amongst these weeds thankfully i'm hoping to get out here and gain control of that now i did have all of this area over here weeded but the weeds took over so um i just kind of like let it go and the reason i let it go is because i'm highly allergic to poison and there you go um i broke out and didn't know why and i totally get why now um this whole area over here had poison in it and we've been trying to pull it up and trying to dispose of it but there is poison all hidden in there so that's a job for someone else not me okay so on this side um in the weeds there <laughs> there is a plant right there and there's a marigold surviving down in there um, i'm going to try to get out here and weed this row as well again um, but there is uh ginger pride cantaloupes in there i'm going to try to get them to go up the string and we're going to go across this trellis here. That's what I'm hoping for, but we shall see. All right, and on the next row, getting into the weeds even more. Again, there's another uh, ginger pride cantaloupe. All right, and this here is a mortgage lifter. And the mortgage lifter has been struggling since day one. We will try to grow it again in better conditions and see what happens. All right, so... This is just absolutely ridiculous with the weeds. Here we have a lemon basil that has gone to seed. I'm probably going to come back and come out here and cut that down. All right. And tucked in them weeds is going to be a rosella hibiscus. I'm going to have to give it some room to grow. It's really been struggling, so... But this is what's growing in this weeded area over here, this weedy area. Okay, and as you see, the weeds have really taken over. It's just becoming out of control. Okay, guys, let's do a little quick recap on what we just pulled out of this area behind me. Okay, so this is the area that we just picked. Okay, guys, all the way over into those weeds a little bit. So let's take a look and see what we got. Okay, so we've got some onions. We have a handful of cherry tomatoes. We've got a handful of cabbage, a few peppers couple of tomatoes some cucumbers i'm going to try to save and make something out of and some cucumbers that i think i can still eat on so we're going to see oh and before we go i want to show you right here is the kusha squash that i'm growing this year as well uh, the family loved it in a pie one year and i've been trying to get it going so we can have another pie okay guys so we're going to walk on to the new the other section of the garden um, we have been piling up the grass clippings from the yard, and we have some compost that we started there underneath the tarp. 
that I'm going to be adding to a bed that I'll show you as well uh, when we get to that. All right, so here are our blueberries. They are in desperate need of weeding. Um, they were a little slack on producing this year, uh, and the grandbaby, Apani, has officially picked this berry bush clean. She was eating them as fast as they were ripening. She That's her number one favorite uh, berry. All right, and over here, this Jerusalem artichoke has just really taken off in this pot. It's But it is definitely a plant that needs lots and lots of water. So I'm not sure if this pot was such a great idea. It's been difficult to keep um, filled with water. So um, I will have to see how that's going to play out. All right, so let's carry on. Um, over here is the banana cabin dish. And that one out there is the ice cream banana. Okay, those are the only two things that are growing out that way besides the um, loquat tree there. All right, and we do have a volunteer watermelon. Again, this is going to be the orange glow watermelon. It's the only variety that we've actually been growing here on the homestead. And um, let's see if we can find some watermelons. I did notice that we had a few. Uh, there is one that rotted on the vine. I'll have to get rid of that one. All right, guys, so there is one watermelon. Okay, so let's take a look and see. There's two more over here. All right, so that's three watermelons so far off of this vine. Over here is going to be a couple more watermelons. This here is the orange glow as well. And also another volunteer um, watermelon plant that has popped up. Okay, so across from this, um, I've been adding this little area here. I've decided to make this um, little strip here my tea garden or tizan garden. Okay, um, so we're going to definitely be adding more plants to this area. This is going to be a rosella hibiscus. We have echinacea. We have rosemary. Plenty of weeds. I need to get that oregano into the ground. And in the center of all that mess is going to be the elderberry I was able to get in the ground. And it is looking fantastic. Okay. And here is some lemon thyme. I'm glad to have some thyme There's growing. another Rosella hibiscus. Oh, and I did forget that we do have some lemongrass on each end of this bed. Here are the walking onions. They are making a fantastic recovery. All right. And um, we have some more onions in those weeds. Now, I don't know what kind of onions that I'm growing. Again, these things have really taken off. Um, this year has been the first year I need to get out here and weed so the competition isn't bad. But um, So this is the first time that I've actually had um, a really good onion production. So I'm definitely going to be sharing what I did to change that. Okay, um, I did harvest a couple of large onions out of there, this area, and I will show you a picture of them. I'll put it here and let you see how huge these things are. I couldn't believe how big these onions got. All right, so here is a um, the bed of um, lamb's ear. It just continues to keep getting bigger. Um, may have to end up taking some of that and knocking it back. Uh, to make it a smaller area, propagating some of that and putting it into other places. Uh, here is some dill. It has bloomed out nicely. Got lots of blooms on there. So glad to see this dill is looking beautiful. Okay, guys. So we'll just go over here, back over here, and look at the... These are going to be some more of those sweet banana peppers, and I'm going to definitely be picking these two bushes. All right. So we do have some cabbage tucked over here, and these heads got uh, quite a bit larger than those other heads, and I think I know what, why. So I'm going to try to duplicate that the next time around to see if that actually happens. So we're going to pick these peppers. And these over here, this bed over here is going to be um, a root vegetable bed. We may throw in some lettuces, things like that. Um, we're building this bed as we go along, and I do see a carrot growing in there. I did harvest all the carrots out of this bed, but apparently one snuck by me, uh, sprouted as we went. And again, this aisle is just 
ridiculous with the weeds, guys. So, um, we're definitely going to be picking these blackberries. Okay, so here is the blackberries and the cabbage and peppers that I harvested from this area. But before we leave this area, I wanted to share with you this zucchini that I'm growing this year. I can't wait to try it. Okay, there is lots of zucchini on here. Um, from what I'm understanding, you can eat it as a summer squash or let it go till it's a winter squash. Now, this one here, I think I've let it go a little too long. Um, it's quite big, so I think I'm going to let it go until winter squash. But I am going to pick that one, and I'm probably going to pick this one here. Um, because we can pick them once they're 15 inches, and this is definitely longer. But it's getting wedged in, in this area here, so I thought I'd go ahead and harvest it and eat it while it's young. So, if you guys have any... Um, recipes for rampicate zucchini please let me know i'd love to try some recipes Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the raspberry area. I do have some things I want to talk to you about uh, in the raspberry section. I've tried to grow beans along this trellis here. I've not been successful. So um, I'm going to keep trying, though. i got to get this area cleaned up. All right, as you see, it is full of weeds. Here is a raspberry. There are some more raspberries in there. So we're going to be getting these out of here. But my plan for this area is going to be all this was raspberries in this wire here. I've not seen any come back inside the wire. They're all over there on the other side, and they're all around this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this whole area up here, getting all these raspberries out and moving those. Okay, and this is where we're going to start our... Uh, pineapple experiment so this is a lot of cleanup before we can even get started but this is thank you for stopping by and taking a moment to tour my garden with you and let me share the things that I'm growing with you and the things that I'm planning to do so until next time guys happy homesteading okay guys so as you see it's not too bad of a harvest but it's not the best harvest either so um, I'm hoping that, that the harvest just keeps getting better and the more things go along the... Okay guys, so as you see, it's not too bad of a harvest. So I wanted to take a second. Overall, it's not a bad harvest. So thank you for taking the time to stop by and uh, bit tour my... Um, let's go ahead and go around the other side of this trellis and take a look a little closer. Uh, this is some Malabar spinach. I'm going to be honest, we don't care for this variety of spinach, even though it grows in the hot summers, but the ducks really like this. So I basically am growing this for the birds this year. Uh, these are all volunteer plants. They came back here, so we're just letting them go. We do have some down there on the other side of that elephant ear growing on the fence for the ducks so um, we do have that going um, this here is a white wonder cucumber it is growing up and going on to the trellis and over here is another white wonder cucumber i've made this simple trellis to go up and go over so we'll see how that works out and then over there is going to be the grapes the thing is so full definitely going to prune that this year this is the eating ginger that we've got growing here in this bed so I'm happy to see that it's doing so well it was struggling going on over here we do have a luna swirl hibiscus beautiful alright so again here are the weeds and we're going to try to not trample the raspberries alright I did pick the blackberries but we ran out of room in our bowl so I'll have to come back out. Here's the rosemary and down there is some more cabbage. But this area here we're going to work on and we're going to be planting some wax beans in this area here as well as that area over there. So I'm going to clean up this cabbage here. Okay. So let's walk over back over this way a smidge and we'll see that we have some more cucumbers. 
these are going to be the bait alpha cucumbers there's one here and one over here and in between the two of them we have um, just your garden variety of sage I'm really enjoying this smell in the garden so okay and the plan over here has not gone as well as I'd hoped but um, the weeds have definitely taken over I'm gonna have to get out here and maintain this whole corner um, but we do have a volunteer um, loofah plant here I'm glad to see this because I didn't get any loofah going this year so I'm glad to have this guy volunteer in the garden and it's already went through the fence but that's life can't control everything all right okay so um the apple trees are doing really good looking really nice so i didn't kill it so thank goodness for that Okay, so let's go ahead and get this cabbage pulled up, and I'll show you the end results of the harvest for today. Okay, guys, so as you see, it's not too bad of a harvest, but it's not the best harvest either. So um, I'm hoping that the, the harvest just keeps getting better. Thanks for stopping by and letting me share my garden with you and taking this tour with me. And until next time, guys, happy homesteading.